Welcome back to part two of the gold field recovery and refining videos. Here's our gold foils down in this uh, liquid that we did that final nitric boil on. It's looking good. And I've moved the uh, filtering of our previous solution over here. Get it out of the way. What I'm going to do now is cut in the uh, vacuum limiting switch because we don't want to pull a full vacuum on this filter. It could cause it to fail. We're going to begin part two by filtering off this final nitric boil. As you can see, that liquid is much lighter in color than the liquid in part one because it doesn't contain as much base metals as the liquid did in part one. So it's uh, fairly safe to conclude that all the base metals now have been removed from those gold foils. Now what we want to do is get the foils and the mud down into the filter and get all the liquid off of there, get it all rinsed off. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll be ready to go to the next step. Here's our prize, the gold foils and gold mud that we've recovered from that gold filled scrap. And now what we'll do is rinse it out with some distilled water. I'm using a specially prepared filter of my own design. It's a 185 millimeter filter. What I do is I've got two funnels. This one fits perfectly down inside this one. So what I do is I use the smaller of the two funnels. This is a 9 centimeter funnel. This is an 11 centimeter funnel. And now what I can do is take this filter and fit it down snugly into this 11 centimeter funnel so that I can capture 100% of the solids. It's important to point out that see that little fold right there? They have to be folded in that fashion. Otherwise the paper will droop down and some of the liquid could spill over. So you got to have this shape all the way around the entire filter. I've got the acid pulled through here. What we'll do is take this material now. I'm going to add it to a melt dish. It's all our gold foils from the gold filled scrap. Gold filled material is a thick coating of carrot gold over brass, usually. And so we've got it all in this filter. I'm just going to transfer the filter to this melt dish. This solution here will contain acid, nitric acid. So I'll add this to one of my silver jars to consume the excess nitric that's in this solution with some sterling silver in my silver jars. getting crowded in here it's 
let's get this out of the way for a second this is our solution from the first video this is the filter that I just prepared and we'll put that in this funnel now what we'll do is go ahead and start pulling the rest of this liquid it should be settled out so it Hopefully it will pull through fairly quickly. You can see it's kind of viscous, thick. There's solids down on the bottom. Let's see if I can show you that. There's some solids down there that have settled out. That's going to contain gold and that will contribute to our yield. So we want to try to capture that down in there. This one's fairly close to being completed that'll be our solution from video number one the filter will contain solids that we want to add to this batch to increase our yield as you can see this is pulling through much quicker that's because we allowed the uh, liquid to settle out overnight and the liquids clear so it's pulling through that filter much quicker here's a closer look at these gold foils and you can see they're thick carrot gold just hollow shells that's a watch case right there you can tell what it was but it's a hollow shell of carrot gold that's what gold fill material is uh, you may be asking can we use this process to uh, for gold plated material and the answer is no because gold plated material is just a few microns of gold over a base metal and this is probably at least a hundred maybe 150 times thicker than gold plated material so if you try to use this process with gold plated material what you'll end up with is a big toxic soup mess and no gold finally got all the liquid pulled off we're doing pretty good here I started about 630 I guess and it's only about 815 so now we're gonna try to rinse just a little bit of this stuff off with some distilled water It's only about 8.30 a.m. And we're looking good for time here. Might be able to get this thing finished up and published today. While we wait for that liquid to pull through those filters, let's take a look at the silver cells. You can see the current flow on both of these is real low. And uh, if you look down in here, this is silver cell number two. And that thing's full of silver. I need to go ahead and make a plan to uh, harvest these. I kind of had them staggered, but I waited a few days before I pushed, placed the other one in operation. So now they're both ready to uh, harvest at the same time. So if you look up in the filters, filters are clogged up on both of them I guess I could put new filters in there and continue finally got the rinse water pulled out of here so what we'll do now is take our funnel with our filter paper in it that's going to be some good material that'll be gold mud and some foils so what we'll do is we're going to place that in our milk dish we'll do the same with this filter pull it down off the flask we're going to add this right on in 
to the melt dish, like so. Both of these liquids now will contain silver. I'm going to set these aside and we'll save them. I'll precipitate out the silver as silver chloride and we'll recover that later, but not in this video. So what we're going to do is clean out our fume hood and get it ready for the next evolution. I need to do an incineration on this material, but I can't very well put my electric oven out in the rain. So we're going to do this inside. This is a furnace floor grate. It's made out of ceramic. This is cracked. I've searched high and low and I cannot find these things anywhere. It should be a uh, square, but it's just a piece here because it's broken. If anybody knows where I can get a new one of these, please post it in the comment section of the video. Now we're gonna put our material in here and incinerate it in our electric oven. Let's see what we've got. It's been in there for about 20 minutes. Oh yeah, it's nice and red. What we'll do is take this out there's our incinerated material. We're going to set it up here and let it cool off. Here's our incinerated foils. It's been allowed to cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer these into a beaker. Got a stir bar in there with it. I'm adding some hydrochloric acid, which is the same thing as muriatic acid. That's about 300, 250 milliliters. Here's the gold foils sitting in hydrochloric acid. And now what we'll do is we'll cover this thing up and I'm gonna add some nitric acid to form aqua regia in here. seven three milliliter doses for a total of 21 milliliters Gonna add some ice here to uh, cool it off, dilute it, and precipitate out any silver chloride that may be present. Let's get down in here and do a quick Stannis test. Boom, got gold in solution. This is pulling through fairly quickly. If 
you look down in the bottom of the beaker, this is what we've got left down there. Might be a couple of pieces of carrot gold down in here. And we'll just add everything to the filter now. Yeah, I do see some what appears to be some random pieces of carrot gold left down in the bottom of the beaker. It's not unusual. Sometimes carrot gold is used to decorate gold-filled stuff. here Oops. I've got a big beaker here we're gonna use this big beaker to do our precipitation see there's a couple of pieces of carrot gold in here I'll pick those pieces out and we'll include that with our next batch of carrot scrap we've got the rest of the gold rinsed out of these solids now Let's get this thing off of here and we're gonna add this little bit of gold solution to our main solution Now let's go ahead and get our first precipitation. This is a, uh, a real green looking solution here. It's got copper in it, a few other metals, but there's gold in there. And now what I'm going to do is add some stump out, which is sodium metabisulfite. I'm going to precipitate out the pure gold. do it there should only be about 15 grams in here I've allowed the gold to settle for a while. Now what we'll do is pour this off, this waste solution off into a waste container. Look at our pure gold powder down in the bottom of the beaker. I'm going to rinse the gold off with a little distilled water. I've got some hydrochloric acid here. It says muriatic acid. But muriatic acid is hydrochloric acid. 
and hydrochloric acid is muriatic acid. We'll pour a little bit on our gold here and give it a rinse with some hydrochloric acid right quick. Now what we'll do is add some hydrochloric acid to the gold. And I'm going to set this up on the heat. Let me get a lid for this. I'm going to set this up on the heat and give this a boil in hydrochloric acid. The gold is a total different color now after that hydrochloric acid boil. I'm going to set the gold up on this heater. And what I'll do now is add some nit uh, hydrochloric acid and a little bit of sulfuric acid to precipitate out any lead that may be present and then a few squirts of nitric acid. And we're gonna put this gold back in solution a second time. Here we go, I'm gonna start the time lapse. I'm adding hydrochloric acid, some sulfuric acid, and I added about 10 or 12 milliliters of nitric acid is all it took to put that uh, gold in solution. You can tell by the fumes there, there's some excess nitric in there. So I took the lid off and let it evaporate down a little bit. Then I put the lid back on and let it boil for a while until all the fumes were gone to ensure that all the excess nitric was out of my gold solution. I've had our solution on boiling for quite some time now. I think we've driven off all of the excess nitric so we're going to put it down here and let it cool off. Still just a little bit cloudy, so I think what we'll do is we'll run it through the same filter a second time, see if we get this to clear up for us. Here you can see the second pass through the same filter has cleaned the solution up for us. 
what happens is that filter gets loaded up with solids and then it's able to filter out even fine finer particulate and that's why we run it back through the same filter a second time here's our funnel you can see it's nice and clean so what we'll do now is transfer the gold into this clean beaker nice and clear Let's reach in here and get a little solution on a piece of filter paper. I'm going to test it with some stannous chloride testing solution. You can see that dark stain right there tells us we've got gold in solution. This is the recipe for my stannous chloride testing solution. A gram of pure tin shot. One gram of stannous chloride crystals. 25 milliliters of distilled water and 30 drops of hydrochloric acid. Shake it up and you can use it immediately. Now we're gonna precipitate the gold second time with some stump out. Stump out by Bonide is sodium metabisulfite. Here we go. It's one spoon. That's the second one. And that's number three. That should do it. That should be enough to uh, get all that gold to precipitate out of solution. Now we'll do another stannous test to make sure that we've got all the gold precipitated. You can see there, no more stain. That means all the gold has precipitated out of our solution now. I think what we'll do is set this up on the heat and let it boil. And that should cause the uh, gold to settle quickly. It's been on boiling for about 20 minutes now. That's a fairly effective way to get the uh, gold to settle out quickly. So now what we'll do is pour off this waste solution. Now I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid. I'm going to set it back up on the heat. Give it a boil and some hydrochloric acid. Now we're going to pour off this hydrochloric acid boil into our waste container. And then what I'll do is I'll rinse it over and over with some distilled water. Let's transfer the gold into a melt dish here. Take it over here to the melt table. We're going to melt this up in ingot.
Here's our pure gold bar that we just poured. It is magnificent. High purity gold. Three nines fine. Perfect. Let's see what we got for a weight on this thing. 17.2 grams of pure okay, gold. Okay, so we 17.2 grams of pure gold divided by 514.4. That gives us a 3.3% yield from that gold filled scrap jewelry. Beautiful. Here's our bar, 17.2 grams, 999 fine gold, three tips. We'll offer this for sale on my eBay site. And this will conclude the gold filled scrap refining and recovery videos. Thank you for watching.